Today, we are analyzing a physics concept known as rotational inertia. Rotational inertia is determined by how far away an object's mass is located from the axis it rotates around. The higher the rotational inertia, the further away an object's mass is from the rotational axis. A ring, for example, has a high rotational inertia because its mass is located in a circle around its rotational axis. A cylinder has a lower rotational inertia as its mass is located closer to the axis that it rotates around. A sphere has an even lower rotational inertia as its mass is located even closer to the axis it rotates around. A lower rotational inertia means less resistance to rotate, which is why the sphere accelerated most quickly down the slope. If you're confused about what the rotational axis is, you can think of it as the line at which the object rotates around, as seen here. If we move our rotational axis of the cylinder to the one shown here, we see that the rotational inertia has increased as its mass is located further away from the rotational axis. This will create a higher resistance to rotational motion. We can take this one step further and move our axis along the cylinder, which will further increase the cylinder's rotational inertia. Here is a comparison of the two cylinders' rotation. We can add a third cylinder with a rotational inertia that is in between the rotational inertia of the two original cylinders. This is called Parallel Axis Theorem. We can apply Parallel Axis Theorem to our initial cylinder, sphere and ring as well, just by moving our rotational axis in the same plane. You may have experienced rotational inertia in real life when sitting on a merry-go-round like this. If you're on the outside, it turns more slowly compared to when everyone's on the inside. This is due to rotational inertia. Or when using a bat, if a bat is too heavy, then it's hard to rotate due to rotational inertia. If a bat is very light, then it'll be easy to rotate, but it may not have enough mass to transfer sufficient momentum to the ball. Even on your bike, which wheel do you think will have the least resistance to rotation? The second wheel will have the least rotational inertia as its mass is located closer to its rotational axis. This is why professional cyclists will use disc-like wheels. Even dancing involves rotational inertia. And that's rotational inertia.